Oh my! Rabbits, rabbits, rabbits. Rabbits, rabbits, rabbits. Whoa, that looks good. It is cold here today. Thanks for joining us, folks. Thanks for joining us. Today is the 8th of Feb. The 8th of Feb. And you probably, you've probably been wondering what happened to me. Well, I just had a lie in, that was all. Just had a little breather from the tube. A little breather. Always a good thing. And um, I've been well, thanks. People have been writing and asking what's happened. What, are you well? So I've been writing back to a few people. So thank you for your thoughts. And uh, yeah, no, just taking a... In January, I always try to just kick back a bit, you know. And... Um, yeah, it's good to be back. I missed the, miss the wheel. To be honest, it's been pretty cold in here. And it's very cold outside now, actually. But I thought, I can't wait anymore, you know? So, I mean, you've got to get out of there, you know? <laughs> so, I'm going to come out here and I spent the morning putting tools together, you know, chamois leathers and throwing sticks and cut off wires, etc. Making them. So today, what I'm going to do is, I got an order, somebody asked me to make some GP bowls. GP bowls, what's that? General purpose. GP stands for general purpose. General purpose bowl. So, Oh, my water's a bit cold, isn't it? Hang about, I've got to get some warmer water in there. That's too cold. But first, I'll take a bit of water out to let a bit. Well. Not very warm actually, but a little raise the temperature a bit. Oh yeah, that'll work. Okay, so one pound of clay for a GP bowl. Have I got an example of a GP bowl? You all know what they are, but I'm gonna sh I'm gonna show you anyway. Um, Cobwebs. That is a GP bowl. So it's basically just a, a V bowl. This one is dry. This one has also been glazed, raw glaze, and it's had a couple of cobalt lines. They're very useful. Surprisingly, I don't sell so many of them actually. Uh, partly because I don't have them on the website, I suppose. That's probably <laughs> that's probably the reason. <laughs> but no, uh, in general, they people do like them. Always used to sell more of them in England than over here. I think they're not big enough for the American. Um, you know. Whoa, can you make it bigger, Simon? That's not too big. My bowl of cereal is much bigger than that. Well, my soup is much more than that. It's not going to be big enough. Well, I don't, I don't think I'm going to be making them any bigger. So these are a pound and they're thrown six and a half inches. Are we in the picture? Are we in the picture? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I'll set up a gauge. I've got a chopstick here, we can set up a gauge. So first of all, I'm going to make one. 
make one. Ah, back on the healing wheel. Boy, we need clay, don't we, in our lives? So always cone it up if you can. It does help, and then you can center it down. And you center it down. Like that, and then put your thumb at the base there to centralize it right at the, the root of the pot. Okay, you want to you want to do that because that's where the pot grows from. Okay, so now we're going to break in, establish the thickness through the floor there at this stage, and then now I I pull up and out. Being careful to keep it a nice round, rounded bottom. We don't want a flat bottom. Now pulling it up. Like that. Pulling it up, 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 up. Now don't go out to the, the The final width, which is six and a half at this stage, because we're going to what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to roll the rim, aren't we? Should we bring that camera down for a bit of detail, or zoom it in, whatever? We just zoom it in on the lip there, and then. Remind me to um, unzoom it. You know, give me a nudge. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, so so now while it's still narrower than this, I'm going to put my finger here. And I'm going to pull the clay over my finger like that, and now continue it all the way over the edge. Now my, the clay dried up then a little bit on my fingers when I did that because I didn't I didn't check to see that it was properly nice and wet before I, before I rolled it, which I should have done. All right, I think it'll be okay. Okay, so at the moment we are reading about six. All right, so. Now I'm going to widen it. Just turning my finger around like that to establish a line right under the rolled rim, which is a sort of, it just makes it look better. Okay, still a little, a little wider we need to go, just a quarter of an inch or so. Pulling it out, making sure the shape is right. Okay. Whoa, it's just almost there, just a smidgen more. So this one being the first one, I want to make sure I, I get it, I get it pretty right, you know. I'm going to set a gauge on it. Yeah. Okay, I think that'll do. Okay. Right, next, we'll take our throwing sticks. I'm going to put the throwing stick in underneath here. Because what we do with these is we wet trim them. In other words, we don't we don't leather hard trim them sort of afterwards. We finish them now at this stage of the game. 
with our throwing stick. You need a right sort of throwing stick for that. And always when I'm doing that, right down there at the base, I've got my fingers on the inside countering the tool because you want to push towards the tool as you push in because if you don't you'll throw up a, a ridge on the inside and spoil spoil the spoil the shape okay let me just show you well, let me just leather it first all right don't forget leather your rims Just check in my mirror. If you don't have a mirror and you're new to this pottery game, get yourself a mirror. Stick it in a lump of clay, put it on the side of your wheel here or somewhere. Doesn't matter where you put it so long as you can see. It gives you the sideways view of, of what you're doing, which you need because situated where as we are right on top you don't get the sideways you don't get the sideways angle you see all right i pull that camera back i want to show you i've got a couple of things to do i've got to get a lump of clay situate that there Just a lump of clay for a gauge. A gauge is just, don't be intimidated by a gauge. Here's a gauge. That's from a previous pot or something I made. All right, that's what a gauge is. It's just a stick and a lump of clay. Don't be intimidated by it. It's your friend, it's not your foe. <laughs> All right, so. So what we want to do. So with these, I know someone's going to ask me, well, Simon, what is the... you didn't tell us how high it was. Well, I don't because I... Well, it's about three inches, okay? Three inches high and six and a half inches width. Okay? And it's one pound in weight. The rest of it you're going to have to eyeball, okay? That means... You're just going to have to train your eye and get used to um, get used to checking the shape with your eye. All right. So what we're going to do is we put the throwing stick, not throwing stick, chop stick. What are we talking about? Okay. So. Set the gauge, have the wheel spinning while you, while you do it. Otherwise, if you set it too close, okay, you don't want it to touch the gauge, okay? And it's, it's a hard material, that is the gauge itself. So if the clay, if the pot hits the gauge, it's going to destroy the pot. And there's a purpose for that, and that is you learn to respect the gauge. <laughs> okay, you don't want some feather there or something or piece of rubber that if you touch it isn't going to... You want something that's going to be vicious. <laughs> it's going to wreak havoc on that rim, so you keep well away from it. Careful, you know? <laughs> respect. Respect the gauge. Okay, next. Can you see that? You see that? Let me just, sh I know I've shown you this a million and one times, but I'll show you again. So there's the gauge, you see, stuck in a lump of clay. Uh, how close is it? Uh, probably about an eighth of an inch away. Okay. There's the inside. And the, the, the profile. Okay. So what we're going to do now is cut him off and then I'm going to lift him off for you, show you, how to, show you how to do that. So ideally, as with all lifting off, now a lot of people have difficulty lifting their pots off the wheel. And that, is, I'm not surprised, because 
they're just people are just poorly taught. Uh, it's not difficult to lift a, lift a pot off a wheel, and you need to know how to do it. Full stop. Okay, you don't want to be having these square bat inserts, and you've got to lever them off, and but that is just you don't want to do that. So. Uh, three things that you need to get uh, successfully lift a pot off the wheel. One is a twisted nylon cutoff wire. Okay. I make these, I sell them, and I also have a video so you, you can actually make them yourself. How to make your own cutoff wire. Um, okay, so look for that if you want to make it, or you can go to my website and, and you can buy one. Okay. It's exactly the right length, so you haven't got to do any of this business. And it's nylon, so if it, it doesn't break, you know, and then jab your finger. Okay, so the three things are twisted nylon cutoff wire, a... Um, make sure that, generally speaking, although it's not such a problem with a GP bowl because of the shape of it, but the outside the outside of your pot is not got slip and slurry all over it, so it's slippery to touch. And also make sure that you, you, you wipe your hands, you know? Just have a towel handy and wipe them. Okay, so simply we're going to take the cutoff wire, we're going to hold it underneath and we're just going to go straight through, put the, cut, put the cutoff wire back where it lives. Always put your tools back so you become a little bit robotic where, as far as your tools are concerned, where you, where you put them, okay? Now with these, to get them off the wheel, because of the shape, you're not going to be able to lift them off with your palms, because the palms will impinge upon the, upon the top here, and push it out of shape. So what you want to do is, as I call it, <laughs> double inverted Winston Churchill victory <laughs> signs, okay? But like, I'm upside down like that, you know? So you're going to get underneath like this, you see, you're going to t attack the pot like that, right at the very base, okay, and you're just going to tilt it towards you and it's going to come straight off, okay. And you're going to put him down like that, give him a little joggle underneath, just to, if, he's, if he looks a little bit out of whack, out of round, just give him a little joggle and he'll go back to being round again. Okay, so now I've got the gauge set. Oh, it's good to be back on the wheel. The wheel makes me squeal. <laughs> so let's uh, boom, boom, boom. We'll bring it in a not as close as before, just about like that. And then I'll have a sip of tea. Yeah, I got a good tea here. This this is moringa and matcha green tea. Now that's a healthy combination. All right, let's do this one together, quickly. Okay, got our tools, yes. All right, so respect the gauge. Now I find the best place for me to put it is here, generally speaking. Now I could have it, now if I'm working on one of those Shimpo type wheels, I'll generally have the gauge just about here, a bit further around, but that's a position that works for me there. So attached to the wheel head, cone up, center down, you know you don't need your wheel going 100 miles an hour, okay? Back off on your speed, everybody, generally. Everybody's throwing too fast. You need to throw slower because the slower you throw, the more the water lasts on your pot. That's a, that's a thought, isn't it? You wonder why you run out of water and your pot gets dry. It's probably because you're going too fast. Okay. Breaking in. And now, pulling up, keep it nice and round on the inside of the form.
for that. So we're going to go first get your height before you get your width, okay? That's a good a good tip for making bowls. Height first before you go out. Because if you've ever tried it, if you go too wide and then you think, oh, I'm not high enough. How can I get it? You can't get it up again once you've gone wide, can you? Okay, so we're actually above the gauge. So right now I'm going to pull that lip over my finger here. And now and then continue all the way over. You'll find with the rolling rims, sometimes it works better than other times. It's the same with me. I find that too. Sometimes I, I find I find that I I uh, I manage to do it better sometimes than others. Okay. Now I am. I'm widening it. You see, out to the gauge. Now I'm going to check it just to make sure that that gauge is well actually it's not quite wide enough. Good job I checked it. So that should be now that should be okay. Freezing day and night. Okay, so I've got my, I've got my, I've got my, my height. And I've got my width because of my gauge. I'm now going to go down into the, the base here. Clean that. So at this stage, I want to give it the belly that I feel that it, it needs. Which I, I basically control visually just by eyeballing it, you know. Okay, right. First we're going to... Now I recommend leathering before sponging out, okay? So you're going to leather. Alright, and now you're going to sponge out. The reason for that is, if you do it the other way around, you sponge out and then you leather, you'll find in the process of leathering, you'll deposit water in the, on the inside of the bowl. Okay. All right. So take your cutoff wire and as you, as you, as you grab it from here, you're automatically going to clean it. Okay. With your between your finger and thumb, you're just going to clean it. Now, with your thumbs down on the wheel head, and with the wheel head going round, cut through. Okay, with the wheel head going round, and you don't want it going round too fast. So ideally, let's put a mark here. See that mark I've put there on the on the wheel head here. So by the time I enter the wire here that mark that's going around, by the time that does one revolution, the wire is just exiting on the other side. Okay, So you enter here, you rotate once, and then you come out. If you want to know the speed, that's the speed that you need. Because you don't want it to go around multiple times. Right. How's he looking? Okay, 
just quickly take that off. Okay, there he is. All right. Okay. Right, we'll lift him off. So remember, uh, clean the pot, use a twisted cutter foil, and clean, clean your hands. In this instance, we are going to lift off like that. You just go underneath and then tilt it like that. He comes straight off. Oh, put him down there. Okay. That one is a smidgen higher than the previous one for some reason. However, okay, there they are. All right, folks, have a go at doing GP bowls. They, you might think that they're easy. They're not as easy as they, you might think. Not as easy. Anyway, um, yeah, thank you for joining me. Uh, if you're interested in coming here on a, for an in-person workshop, um, go to my website. All the dates are up there for workshops for this year. Here in this studio, we can take up to about six, six people, seven maybe. Um, yeah, come and uh, come to Milheim. Come and take a workshop. I think you'll find it pretty helpful. Uh, most people do. So, uh, what else? I, I'm doing Zoom classes using my my um, my friend, the webcam, <laughs> the muddy webcam. I'll tell you why it's so muddy because I keep grabbing the thing off the tripod and saying, "Here, look," and I'll show you. And I put the camera like really close. Of course, it gets pretty dirty. Yeah, come on, if you're interested in a Zoom class, I am not going to be doing the Zoom classes for very much longer, simply because uh, I'm going to be wanting to get on with just other workshops, really. And it's just, it's just something I thought I'd do over the winter time, you know, and, um, but I'm thinking, I. I don't want to be doing that incessantly for too long. What with YouTube and then giving workshops and, have, and then having to do these in-person Zoom classes, it's, it's fine, you know. I've enjoyed doing it. It's worked actually really well, I think, the, the Zoom classes for, for those who, if anybody wants to do it, you better get in there quick before the end of March. Because come April, I'm going to probably be quitting them. You know, just quitting them for now. Uh, I, and I do do individual, if somebody wants one-on-one -on -one tuition and they want to come on a workshop just for, for themselves, yeah. You know. Or if maybe you, you want to come, maybe you're a small group of people or a group of potters or friends, you know, and you want to all come together. That's kind of nice because then everybody knows each other. Well, I don't know them, but, you know, they all know each other. So they have more fun, you know. Yeah. So if you want to do that, write to me. Um, what else? Yeah, go to my website, simonhpottery.com. As there's, there's, oh yeah, I'm making wheels. I'm having another batch of wheels made. So if you're interested in a leech treadle wheel, and I do have one. It's under wraps at the moment, but this one has not had clay on it. It's brand new. Um, you know, the usual, the usual, the usual. Uh, affair, you know, I've spoken.